in keeping with your high. 72-year-old Jim Simons is one of the world's richest men. He's worth an estimated $10.6 billion, according to Forbes. He ranks number 74 on its list of the world's billionaires. Simons is a former mathematician, and he worked as a code cracker on government projects in the 1960s. In 1982, he founded Renaissance Technologies, a hedge fund that manages $15 billion in assets using complex mathematical models. The business that we built, still runs today, is 100% model-based. Simons puts a premium on hiring PhDs. About half of the firm's financial researchers hold them. But he says it's been hard to find qualified American job applicants, and he blames the state of math education in this country. Here's how we compare to the rest of the world in math, which you know well. The World Economic Forum ranks the United States 48th in the quality of its math and science education. What's going on? The answer uh, to my way of thinking is very simple. We don't have enough high school teachers who really know math and for that matter science. So, well, why is that? 40 years ago or 50 years ago, if a person knew that much mathematics, oh, he could be an engineer of some sort or he could, he could teach, but along came computers, biotechnology, a whole bunch of stuff, and suddenly people who are quantitative, people who know mathematics or physics or whatever, hey, there's an awful lot of jobs. And most of them pay a whole lot more than teaching in high school. By comparison of what people can make outside, the pull out of the classroom is, is inexorable. So in 2004, Simons decided to take matters into his own hands, and he put $40 million into a nonprofit he founded called Math for America. The organization has two goals. First, to recruit talented people who wouldn't ordinarily go into the teaching profession. Second, to keep good math teachers from leaving the classroom for the lure of a bigger paycheck in private industry. The solution, of course, if you don't have enough qualified people in a certain profession, is to raise the, raise the, uh, the compensation of the profession, both in respect and in money. Is what fraction of a rectangle Simon's organization does do that. Yeah. They're now paying the 420 teaching fellows in their program $100,000 over five years to supplement their salaries. A negative X squared. The program also covers the cost of master's degrees for their teaching fellows. You want people, best and brightest, to skip Google and Goldman Sachs and more Yeah, if it begins with G, I don't want to I, that's go right. that's uh, <laughs> To teach. I, obviously, I don't want all of them to do that, but I want to make the job sufficiently attractive so that at least it is an alternative. And if you happen to like working with kids, and you happen to like having summer off, and you happen to like kind of being your own boss, hey, it's not a bad job. <laughs> the program has shown success in keeping those well-trained teachers in the classroom. Oh, Roughly 85% of its fellows are still teaching after five years. That's compared to a national average of only about 50%. First problem, somebody, give me a hand. Simons' goal now is to see the Math for America program replicated in districts across the country. Don't get me wrong, there are certainly there are some wonderful and knowledgeable mathematics teachers in our school systems, and we, we have a program here in New York, and we've uh, identified a reasonable number of people, but not nearly enough. In the federal government. Yes. Ideally, what would you like them to do? I want us to do in America what we're doing in New York. A core of teachers who would represent between 10 and 20 percent of the public school teachers of math and science. Give them a boost in their pay of the order of 20 percent. Give them a, a term of five years. How do they get in? They pass a test of knowledge. I want to be sure they know the subject. But I'd like that done nationally. And the cost would be about $2 billion a year. Of course, increasing education funding in the current economic climate is not so easy, especially as teachers around the country fear layoffs. But Simons argues it's not a question of increased spending, but of changing priorities. There are so many other people beating around this issue without getting to the heart of it. They say, oh, we've got to put computers in the classrooms. You don't have to do that. Nice, but you don't have to do that. No one is talking about the obvious thing, having better, more knowledgeable teachers. And it so uh, offends me 
to see the obvious solution not undertaken, these billions and billions and billions and billions that we're spending on education, and, and, and not facing the fact that right there we're missing the boat. So uh, I get passionate about it.